What's up guys, it's your boy the New York Hobbies, back at again another video, and before we even start, I just want to say I'm sorry uh, if in my intro and outro videos that um, the camera is oscillating like it is right now. Um, my front facing camera has kind of like a problem uh, direct, like trying to like focus on far range objects and close range objects like, I'm, like myself. Um, but this will only be for the intro outro video. My backward facing camera is uh, working perfectly. So sorry, this will probably be the last time because now I know not to film with far range objects, but it's just this plane is 8.4 feet and there's no way I'm going to get it on film uh, at once. So because of that, and I wanted a good intro position for it. And that's literally hanging right on top of my computer and my uh, my bed. So that's pretty much it. So sorry about that, guys. Just a little warning for the intro and outro of this video. The builder view itself will be normal because I'm using my back facing camera. But like I just said, my ASW 28, 8.4 feet, 100 inches from wingtip to wingtip. Um, and it's, 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 it's ginormous, guys. It's absolutely ginormous. I just finished it, um, I think, yesterday from this recording. So I rec I'm recording this on January 20th, if I believe, or 20, or 19th. I think it's 20th uh, of 2021, obviously. And this will be my second video of 2021, so I'm very happy about that. And it's a humongous, you know, very humongous plan. We're restarting off 2021 with big dreams right here. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. There's no need for the intro to be long because I'm really just going through a couple of things. I will put up pictures of a couple of things that I mentioned in this build overview. Um, all the stuff that I ordered, not like all the stuff that I ordered, but like some stuff that I don't remember in the top of my head. I'll put a picture and I'll look it down in the description. Like always of all my builder reviews that I've have done uh, so far, all stuff will be linked in the description and you guys can do whatever I did at the same time. Uh, if you want to, it's up to you. You can do it differently. INAV, um, RG Pilot, whatever you want. I ran the same exact SNL as I did for my East Guy. So, uh, I know how the SNL works from like the back of my hand and it should work perfectly for pretty much no matter what plane you put it in. As long as settings are all right, it should work how it should. And these are both T-tail planes. So, you know, normal, uh, planes. So the SNL should work beautifully i still have yet to use the snl like on a wing and i definitely want to try that one day so definitely want to try that one day so all right so it like i said it is an 8.4 foot glider and i do want to film it with the wings on so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to film it on my bed usually you guys are sitting right now on my rc table because this is my normal table behind me but i have to film on my bed it's, it's the only way I can film the whole with the wings on. Unless I take the wings off and I really don't want to do that because I want to show you guys the flaps and the ailerons and I just spoiled it. But whatever, if you guys are searching this video, you know about the ASW28. Um, yeah, uh, let's go on to the build overview. No need to make the intro and outro too long. All right, well, now on to the build overview. So we're gonna start off from front to back, make this quick, you know, uh, my East Guy build overview was pretty long. So I want to make this one quick. It's pretty much the same thing as the East Guy. Just only thing different is I am not running a pan servo like I am in the East Guy. I'm not running a pan servo, but everything else is exactly the same, just a little extended, obviously. All right. So from the front, I took out the prop, the stock prop to a from a ten point six or a ten or uh, a ten sixty. To a 12.65, so a 12 by 6.5 or 6.5 uh, prop. Not only should I get more efficiency with the 850 kV motor, I should also get just a little bit more power and a little bit more speed out of this thing because it does have a little bit smaller of a wing cord compared to like a Phoenix 2400 or a Ranger 2400, which those, because they have a bigger wing cord, can actually fly a little bit slower than this. This is gonna be a faster model guys if you want to this is going to be a faster glider because the wing cord is so short uh compared to the 2400 uh ranger and phoenix so but it still glides perfectly and i have if you guys seen archangel's video you know that this thing does not like tip stall at all so you don't have to worry about the short wing cord being a problem with tip stalling because there is no tip stalling problem so you guys see here i am using for now this is not my final battery setup i had just ordered a 
Kolosi or a Lion Pack from AliExpress. It's a 7,000 milliamp Lion. I'm going to put it on the screen now and you guys will see what I ordered. It's a 3S, 7,000 milliamp Lion, two, uh, 3S, 2P Lion, so it's two stack. And it's pretty much the same Lion that I used on my East Guy, just plus another three and it's flatter, except for a triangle. Obviously, we have the SNL, and right next to that, right there, we have, uh, if my camera will focus good enough, we have um, my Ubeck right there. So, the Ubeck is right under the tray, right on top of the cover for the wheel. Now, you guys are wondering, where is the receiver, since everything up front is so, you know, nicely compact, because I have the PMU here, I have the ESC here. The SNL here and the Hobby Wing U bag up here and a whole bunch of mess of wires. But if you guys see that little black thing in the back, you guys can probably see it. The little white wire my, right on top of where my finger is through that little hole. That's where my receiver is. My receiver is backed up in the back. The antennas kind of stick up to around right here. And that's good because now my receiver is out the way, especially for a 10 channel receiver. It's, a, it's, it's not huge, but like it's also very wide. I was really hoping that it would fit and it fit perfectly so all i had to do was i had to rip out this cover this cover um is actually glued on and you just have to unscrew the wheel right there unscrew the wheel off rip out the cover uh, i double side taped it to the back and then i re-glued the cover back on and i uh put back the wheel so um i there's also a tray that goes here i took out that tray there's also a pilot that goes here I also took out the pilot because that's just so much weight in the front and um, I just didn't want it. But it turns out once you took out both those things and you have FPV gear in the back, this thing becomes extremely tail heavy, guys. Extremely tail heavy. I swear. These two batteries won't balance unless I have this 36 gram canopy on it. I swear. it won't, The plane won't balance unless I have that canopy on it. I'm not even joking. With without the tray here and the fake pilot, if my controller can stop moving or stop making sounds, this plane with the FPV gear in the back becomes extremely tail heavy, guys. Which is great. That means you can put bigger batteries. This is a 8.4 foot wing wingspan. This thing could take bigger batteries. That's great because I want to do long range FPV. So I'm very excited. I just ordered the 7,000 milliamp Lion. Uh, like a day, two days ago, and it just got shipped out today, so I'm very excited about that. But, alright, let's keep on going. We are running stock servos and everything. Same thing with the East Guy. Only thing, uh, same, oh, sorry, I need you guys to get a nice look at the East Guy. Same thing with the East Guy. Uh, we're running stock servos. Obviously, the difference is we have, probably my favorite feature of this plane is flaps, baby. Look at those. I love flaps. Flaps is like one of my favorite aircraft designs in the whole entire world. In the universe of the history of aircraft, I think flaps is like my most loving design. And I just can't wait to see this thing fly so slow, guys. And with this 12-inch prop, I can probably gain height just as fast as I slow down, you know? So, yeah. So, GPS is here, and there's a whole bunch of mess of wires in the back. As long as you can't see it, I'm okay. That's why I, like, that's why I did this nice zip tie uh, duty up here. We have the GPS here covered by some tape. Um, so the thing is, this, uh, before I even go on, this plastic is very, very tough. This is a plastic fuselage, a plastic unibody. And it's pretty much like milk carton cla uh, plastic. And I was trying to drill a hole in there. And it just, I couldn't drill a hole. It was insane. It was like the plastic was like bending, which is great because in a crash, if you ever have a crash, the plastic will bend instead of snap off. So this plastic unibody that uh, Volantix did is beautiful, phenomenal. Um, obviously, they didn't create the plastic unibody, but the fact that they integrated it into their bigger planes like the Ranger and the Phoenix is just great because this plastic is so good. All right, well, that's pretty much everything in the front, really. You know, you just have all your basic wiring setups all your wiring setups right here, so it, everything's good. I hope my camera's focused enough. I'm really not looking at it as I'm filming. I do have a, uh, I had to add two extra giant wire extensions to the back to integrate my uh, video transmitter and my FPV camera. So 
That's also another reason why it can be uh, tail heavy. There's just a lot of extensions connected to each other. I'm on two, two rows of that as well because I have to have it for two. So speaking of the tail, we also have something very similar. We have my C800T, which I love very much. It's probably like one of my, this is honestly like the only camera I've ever bought, the only good camera, FPV camera I've ever bought in, and I'm probably never going to look back. This is probably one of my best cameras ever. I do have a cheapo $10 camera on that, and that thing sucks, but it's good enough for the wing, so I'm okay. And I just love the C800T. You could just see how clear the C800T is. Oh, hello. You could just see how clear the C800T is with um, the tail and everything. See, you can see everything. I love the flat view. I absolutely love the tail view. I wish you could see wingtip to wingtip, but I still love the tail view a lot. Uh, next to the C100T, we also have an embedded. You can see that I embedded it, so I can still have the airfoil of the, uh, you know, I still have the airfoil of the elevator. I have an embedded, uh, I think it's called an Ishin TX5258 or a 5852. I'll put a picture because I don't remember the name exactly, and I'll put a picture up right now. And uh, it's an 800 milliwatt switchable uh, vid video transmitter. And <laughs> I realize now that like I bought the lower milliwatt transmitter for the plane that is technically supposed to go farther than this. I bought, this is a 1200 milliwatt. This is a 800 milliwatt. But I digress because I have Pagonda antennas both sides. And I'm also running a triple feed patch antenna, which you've guys seen before, I think in my eSky build overview. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's very straightforward. We have rudder and all that stuff. Okay, now my rudder is working. Okay. Before the other day, my rudder wasn't really working that great. Um, and that's pretty much it. The 12 inch prop, I can't wait to see the power it has on 3S because I saw Archangel's video and I saw that he was running his on 4S. And he felt like this thing was underpowered with the 850 kV motor. But guys, if you put a 12 by 6.5, which I'll link everything down in the description. I mean everything, everything down in the description. This 12-inch prop with the conjunction of a 3S Lion, as long as it has, as long as it has like a 40 amp constant charge, it's great. On 3S, on 3S LiPo, this thing does even more power. So it's crazy. All the functions are the same. We have pretty much everything. The only difference is um, I am not running a sum mode three position switch. As you guys know from my eSky, I have manual, stabilize, sub mode, and then this would have been, I think, uh, altitude hold, circling, and return to home. But as you guys can see, that's actually my flaps. What I have now is the sum mode switch is on here. And I said in my I said in my walkthrough of the AFPV SNL. Um, I said in my walk you have to have two three position switches. You don't have to have two. You definitely have to have one for the main one. So you have to have one, 100%. But the second one can be a two position switch if you really want to, which I did because I wanted flaps on a switch except for on a variometer, which I didn't want flaps on my variometer. I wanted on a switch. So now I have my flaps on a switch. So I am very excited about that. Um... Uh, I, so one thing I do encourage you guys to do is run it off a of UBEC. Um, I've said this multiple times. All my planes run UBECs except for one or two. That doesn't run a UBEC, obviously. That's its own little thing. That doesn't need a UBEC because that the motor doesn't do more than 20 amps, and this has a 40 amp ESC or 30 amp ESC installed in it. So I'm not worried about the mo uh, ESC dying. But for stuff like this with a bigger prop and a 30 amp ESC, um, you know what I mean? Even with this Dragonfly, which I finished, guys. I finished this Dragonfly. I just haven't, I just haven't like, uh, done a build review, which will be after this build review. This is running a UBEC. Obviously, you guys know that's running a UBEC. That's running a UBEC. That is also running a UBEC. And then now this is running a UBEC. So pretty much six out of my seven planes are all running UBECs. And I've adopted UBECs from Ali Chameau because he's right. Um, who knows if you're, you're overworking your ESC which that's what exactly what I was doing with my Fun Cub. My Fun Cub had a very fast KV motor, and I had a 20 amp ESC, and it was doing more than 20 amps. And there was times where my Fun Cub just would, the prop would stop working. And if I ran the ESC UBEC, my servos would have stopped working, and it would have been a worse disaster than it really was. But now that I'm running, but I was running a UBEC, so my servos were always working. So I do, I do recommend you guys adopt UBECs. 
But that's pretty much it. Uh, one difference that I did from the eSky is I direct soldered the ESC to the PMU. Uh, connector is still the same, so that's nothing different. Um, took out the tray, took out the pilot, but that's pretty much it, guys. Um, 800 milliwatt C800T, all embedded as well. All the wires were embedded. Um, I wanted everything to be nice and sleek uh, for whatever. Only problem is about this is that I made it that um, the rudder, I meant the elevator cannot be detached from the uh, rudder, but the rudder could be detached from the actual plane. So that's good. It's still detachable, still breaks down. And as you guys see, you guys can see the beautiful view of the uh, plane. And I can't wait to fly like this. I've never flown a plane from the angle in the back. So I'm, I'm hoping um, my depth perception will work. I'm hoping the camera depth perception will work. And everything will be all well. Uh, yeah, the SNL looks exactly the same as my East Guy because it is exactly the same. It's the exact copy. They're, these are manufactured. So they come literally exactly the same way. Uh, it's just, it's insane how, uh, I love this SNL guys. I highly recommend the SNL, especially for normal T-tail planes. I highly recommend the SNL. This is like my third time buying an SNL. Um, the second time I did it was I actually bought the flight controller itself because if you guys saw my, uh, if you guys saw my, uh, last video of 2020, which I'll put a card up, uh, I said that I, Thought that I messed up the SNL flight controller and I bought a new one. But um, I didn't need it anymore because I actually fixed this SNL flight controller. And then I and then I exchanged it with Banggood for the for this plane. So uh, except for getting just the module itself without the PMU and all that stuff, I actually got the Dragonfly. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, everything else is basically the same. Um, I will go through my settings um, once I'm really finished flying this thing. And yeah, 8.4 foot glider. I can't wait to fly this thing. All right, on to the outro. All right, well, that was pretty much my builder review. I hope you guys liked it. Um, I tried to make this one shorter for my East guy, and I hope I did the job. But some people liked the informational uh, stuff, some people didn't. A couple things I forgot to mention in this builder review um, is uh, I have a problem with my prop and spinner, and I'm hoping this is not just me. And that my my uh, prop adapter that it comes with likes to skip on the actual um, on the actual uh, like the actual shaft. If you do like blip of throttle, if you do a burst of throttle, I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys what I mean. So we're in manual mode. So look, it's normal if I go up slowly on throttle, pretty much as if I had expo on throttle. normal if I slowly increase throttle, but if I fast it, you hear that? You hear that? I think that's the prop adapter actually skipping, like it's not engaging anymore. But if I go slow, like I did again, I just shot the canopy all the way back. I pretty much have to fly this plane, the throttle at least, as if I had Expo on throttle, which is how I fly all my planes. But it's just something about the skipping of the prop that I'm a little scared about. Um, I'm not scared it's going to fly off because obviously I'm full throttling it while I'm holding it. So it's, 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 it's going to be better if it's in the air pushing the weight, the plane of the weight, like the weight of the plane and not the actual weight of like nothing. So, um... If it hasn't flown off by now, then it's not going to fly off in the air, so I'm not too concerned. Other thing that I did was I actually so if you get the if you guys get the uh, AS728 right away, you'll see that the connection like the connection ports that go to the wings, there's like a hole in the fuselage. That hole is very tiny, guys. Um, and I just want to let you know, guys. I just want to let you know. I'm gonna put up a little little clip of me opening one of the wings. And you'll see that that hole, I had to open it up because it's just, it was so tiny. And um, once you open it up, getting the wings on and off just makes your life easier. So I made my life easier and I encourage you guys to do the same exact thing. I encourage you guys to open up that hole in the fuselage. You guys see what it is. It doesn't have to be perfect. Mine's not perfect at all. Um, but yeah, 
But after that, that's pretty much it. That's the only, uh, this is the only problem I'm facing right now with this uh, plane. And it's not much of a problem. It's just something in the back of my head that I have to remember that not to give it a little quick blip of throttle like I would to like my Skylark. You know what I mean? So eSky, I don't do that. So it's not like um, it's going to be a, a crazy problem for me. But it's just something about it that's just, it's just really, you know, at me right now. It's just really, you know, tinkering me right now. And uh, I just I have to figure it out. I'm going to get another prop and spinner and I'm going to see if that works. And uh, if not, then I'm going to get a new motor, see if that works. And if not, I'm going to have to go the old conventional way, like all the prop adapters that I use on my other planes. And I'm going to have to do that with a foldable uh, connection and not this beautiful nose cone. But besides that, I did weigh the plane. It did come out with the two LiPo batteries that I have in here. It did come out to like a little bit over 1,600, uh, uh, I think like 1,650 uh, grams. So that's like what, 3.3 grams, 3.5 grams? I meant pounds, 3.3 grams, 3.5 pounds, something like that, which is really not that bad. So I'm uh, not, not, not mad about it, that, uh, even, with the, even with the two LiPos. Which I'll be running a lighter battery because the Lion actually weighs less than this. So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I hope I didn't uh, completely waste your time. And uh, I can't wait to mate in this thing. It's going to be an absolute beast, I hope. Let's just, uh, let's just hope that uh, I don't skip the, 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 the uh, throttle uh, or the prop adapter. Let's just hope that doesn't happen during flight, and I know it won't because um, I don't really do that. Like, I don't like rev it up as if it's, I'm driving a nitro car. So, yeah, it's been your buddy, New York Hobbyist. Thank you for sitting, uh, sitting here watching me, standing up, whatever you're doing, and I just hope that you guys are safe. And, uh, yeah, keep flying, RC. Keep driving, RC, because my car's right in front of me, and I hope you guys have an amazing day. Peace! Okay, so I was just editing the video and I forgot to mention one thing that was on the bed, as you guys saw. And that is my brand new uh, 2 milliwatt booster, or sorry, 2000 milliwatt booster, 2 watt booster. So the reason I bought this is because I was uh, having range issues with the dual antenna mod that I did to my Flyscot. And it makes sense, honestly. It made a lot of sense. But I have since converted my Flyscot back into a single you can see the single on the top and i'm running a stock antenna the the lateral the horizontal antenna uh which is great because i've heard that the stock antenna have great range just by all alone and with this two two thousand milliwatt booster and one of these antennas i have a 12 db antenna here 60 db antenna 4 db antenna even 2 db antenna i think i should get major major range but i'm hoping i'm absolutely hoping and uh yeah that was a little problem with the east guy um video i did i couldn't go farther than that field because it was hard pointing two different antennas at the same you know guy but with the milliwatt booster and the stock antenna boys it's gonna be a wrap boys and girls sorry it's gonna be a wrap if you're if any girls are watching i don't know it's going to be a wrap. I'm going to have range, man. I hope. I hope. All right. But like I said, peace out, guys. Have a great day. And uh, yeah, it's been your boy, the New York Copies. I don't know what else to say.